Nestling in the southeast of England is the city of Canterbury, a cathedral city and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is a guide to the city walls and ancient gates, what's left of them. But our guide will be William Somner, who published his travel guide in 1640, called The Antiquities of Canterbury. Somner's Canterbury looked somewhat different. We will follow Somner's suggested itinerary, taking in first Burgate or St Michael's Gate. We will then follow the walls to Newing Gate or St George's Gate, then the Riding Gate, Worth Gate, West Gate, North Gate. Finally, complete our tour at the Quinning Gate. Somna tells us the first mention of Burgate is in the reign of King Ethelbert in 605. The Burgate that he viewed was built in 1475 and sadly is no longer with us. The gate guarded the road to Sandwich, which is where the Romans first landed in England. It is also the route to St Augustine's Abbey. The walls were most likely built initially by the Romans, but have been rebuilt and refashioned many times. Descending from the city walls, you are now approaching Newing Gate or St George's Gate. It was called St George's Gate after the church, which was right next to the gate, and was built in the 1470s, that it was constructed chiefly for a more direct passage into the heart of the city from Dover Road. Then it's back up onto the city walls. We're heading to the oldest of the gates into Canterbury, the Riding Gate. Somna finds the first reference to the Riding Gate in the archives of St Augustine's Abbey, dated in 1040. The gate guarded the route to the Dover Road and to the key Roman settlements of Richborough, Dover and Lynn. Somna tells us that in living memory people would walk over the gate, but that had since collapsed. St Edmund's Church had stood close to the Riding Gate, but even by Somna's time this had disappeared. Continuing our journey, we now return to the city walls, walking past what today is called Dane John Gardens, but in Somner's time was called Dong Hill. We're now descending off the city walls to what Somner calls the Worth Gate. Somner has little to say of the Worth Gate. Indeed, he does not believe this is the Worth Gate. He suggests that the gate next to the castle would more likely be the Worth Gate. This gate he relegates to that of being a mere postern gate to Winchip. As we follow the city walls, you can see how they've been included and adapted into new buildings. Many historians think that Canterbury Castle is of Norman origin, but Somna believes it is earlier and built after the Viking raids of 1011. He tells us that in former times the castle was used as a common prison. We now follow the walls past St Mildred's Church across the Stour to the area where the cattle market used to be. We recross the Stour and head into the Westgate Gardens.
the Westgate Towers are the best preserved in Canterbury. Edmurus, the monk of Canterbury, writing at the time of William the Conqueror, tells how Archbishop Lanfranc created a hospital outside the walls for lepers. The Westgate, having fallen into disrepair, was, as Sumner tells us, re-edified by Archbishop Sudbury in the reign of Richard II. At Somner's time, the Westgate was still the city prison or jail. He tells us that Newingate was a copy of Westgate and were both the principal entry and exit to the city. Both gates were defended by sturdy portcullises. Now we follow the city walls, heading towards Northgate. The tower in the city walls is called the Sudbury Tower, after the Archbishop. Sudbury met a gruesome end, having his head cut off by Wat Tyler's Peasants' Revolt in 1381. We cross the River Stour for the final time, heading towards the North Gate. The North Gate stood under part of St Mary's Church. The city wall forms part of the church, with the lower red brick courses being of Roman origin. The North Gate was still standing in Somner's time, and he tells us that it was previously used as a hermitage, but was now part of the church. As we walk towards the Quinning Gate, the city walls lay hidden in people's back gardens and as part of other buildings. For Somnus telling, what we today call the Quinningate is not the Quinningate. These Roman bricks are all that remain of the original Quinningate. What we call the Quinningate today was, by Somnus telling, a postern gate to St Augustine's Abbey. And with that, we are back where we started at Burgate.